Hey guys, it's Bear here with Journey to Preparedness, helping you prepare not your doomsday, but your everyday. So on uh, this edition of the podcast, edition number 3030, uh, we continued our beginning prep series and we talked about get home bags. Um, now there's a whole different, you know, there's bug out bags and things like that. They're pretty common in the preparedness realm, but get home bags are really the essential bag that we should all be carrying, no matter what our preparedness level is. And a get home bag is just that. It's a bag that's going to help you get home from whatever location you're at to get back to your home base, right? Your family, your loved ones, all your preps, okay? This is the bag that's going to get you there. So it's not, you know, the, the bug out bag is if you're leaving, all right? The get home bag is you're at, say, your work and you need to get back home to your home, you know, and... I kind of laid it out in, you know, the, if you listen to the podcast, it's laid out kind of some of the scenarios I give is, you know, let's say it's Hollywood, doomsday, end of the world, zombie apocalypse type situation, and you're stuck at work, all right, and now you need to walk home, because an EMP, you know, everything that you can think of, every doomsday scenario all hit at once, aside from, you know, it, it, everybody's dead, but and you need to get home to your loved ones from your workplace, and you can't use your vehicle. All right. Let's say you're you're on your way home and you know your car goes in the ditch and now you need to walk home. Or even if you're not going to walk home, if you're going to stay overnight or wait for help, right? If it's a blizzard type situation, the roads are down, you were traveling trying to get home, you went in the ditch, you're stranded, nobody's coming to help you for hours, you know, maybe till the morning. Well, you don't want to risk hypothermia by not being prepared to survive that situation. So a get home bag, even if you're not traveling, will help you have the essentials to survive that short duration. All right. Uh, typically, you know, for most of us, our, you know, if your commute is, I mean, some people in, in major cities, your commute may be an hour long and it's five miles, you know. Uh, some of us, myself, you know, my commute's about 30, 35 minutes, uh, and it's about 30 miles-ish, all right? Uh, while you can push yourself to do, you know, 20 miles in a day, right? You don't know the terrain, you don't know the, 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 the situation, it's a stressful situation. If you don't, you know, if you're not walking or hiking every day, you know, the if it's a blizzard that's going to alter you know the distance you can travel you know you're you're adding weight because you're going to have that bag on you so you're not going to be able to get home in one day while it doesn't seem that far the reality is it's going to be a little further than you think all right and not knowing the situation and the stress you're going to be under uh by having a bag prepared to get you through i would say one to two nights you know, uh, is really going to help you in surviving basically and getting back to your loved ones, getting back to your supplies, right? You've got all this food and water and, and fuel and everything else stored up to help you survive any sort of su any type of situation, right? You've done all this preparing, you've got all this storage. What good is it to you if you die out there and you can't get to it? I mean, it all does is help your neighbor live, live happy and fat because they got all your supplies because you weren't there, all right? You didn't make it. So having this having this get home bag is going to help you get there. And uh, I'm not going to go down every item. Again, as I state in the podcast, this should be personalized to you and your situation, your climate, your region, you know, uh, where you, how far you need to travel, you know, what, you know, if you're down in California, Southern California, you're probably not going to need the same clothing requirements. Or if you're in Arizona, even though in Arizona it can get very cold at night. So take that into consideration. But compare that to Wisconsin, you know, where I am. And we've got, you know, below freezing temperatures pretty regularly. And you never know what the temperature could flu fluctuation could be from uh, one day to the next. Uh, especially when you're talking spring and fall. You know, you get, and that's when, that's when hypothermia events tend to take place more often because people aren't prepared for it because they left the house when it was 65 degrees and they went out in shorts and a t-shirt and then they get stranded uh, that night when it dropped back down to 30. 
All right, so these are things you need to take into consideration. By having that bag prepared, it's going to help you survive that situation. All right, now I'll list off a few of the items that are some of the more common semi-essential items. Again, this is personalized, so it's what you need, what you feel you should carry. Uh, don't you? You can go on the internet and you can look up, you know, get home bags, and there will be a hundred different websites giving you a hundred different lists of a hundred different things. All right, everybody's going to tell you that their list is the best list, and yada yada yada. Make it personal. Make it yours. All right, don't listen to anybody else. Don't let anybody else tell you what you need or what you don't need. All right, you take what you think you need. You take what's best for you and your situation. All right, water. Water is a good thing to have, whether it be the little 16 ounce bottles, uh, you know, disposable bottles you get, or it's emergency drinking water. I'll leave a link to those below, the little emergency drinking packets. Uh, even if you're filling up like a, a even if you're taking a Nalgene, a Nalgene bottle and, and keeping that in there, or a clean canteen, you know. Um, clean, tan, clean canteens are great water bottles, not only for, for water, for containers, but if you get the single walled ones, uh, probably have to go on Amazon, I can leave a link below for those. Uh, the single walled ones are great because they can be put right in a fire to boil water for helping for purification. Uh, if you're getting, you know, water from a stream or lake or something like that on your route, um, they're great for that. Double walled, don't do it. All right, you need the single walled ones. Uh, they're very hard to find nowadays. But again, Amazon, you can get them. Uh, the Nalgene's are great because they're pretty rugged and they hold a lot of water, but obviously you can't boil water in these. So if you're going to carry something like this or a different, you know, container for water, uh, I would recommend having a different container, either a metal cup or, you know, even if you watch my uh, bug out bag on a budget, uh, in there you can see I just got a loaf pan from Walmart for 90 cents, 97 cents, whatever it was. And that's great because that can go right on a fire and you can boil water. And whether you're boiling water for purification or boiling water for your food, say if you're carrying some mountain house food or anything like that, it, it's great to have a, a, a way to boil water. Uh, fire. Uh, I'm sorry, not to get out. Uh, I'm going to stick, go back to the water here. If you're going to carry water and say you live in a climate like mine where water freezes, especially if you're leaving it out in your car, maybe only fill it up three quarters of the way. Leave room for that expansion so you don't blow it up and, you know, end up with frozen water all over everything and then as it melts it get everything gets all wet and destroyed and then you don't ruin your container all right so you have something to hold water in uh water filters whether it be a sawyer mini the life straw the uh the hydro blues uh even if you're carrying like a water bottle i know life straw makes the water bottles with the filter i actually i, I could i'm not gonna go get it but i have one upstairs and i and i actually have actually hold on let's uh Let's pause this here and I'll go get it. Okay, so here is the, the Life Straw one. And you can see it's got the Life Straw filter right inside of it. Uh, these are great. Or you could even go with the Berkey Sport. And you can see, you can see that real well, but it's got the, the Berkey filtration system right here inside of it. And these can be replaced. Uh, they're both great. Uh, relatively close in price. I prefer Berkey's. Um, Life Straw is a great filter for what it is, but nothing compares to a Berkey. So if you can get this, and I'll leave a link to uh, the the Berkey guys website there where I got this from. And it, actually, this came. I'm not sure if it's still going on, but I know for a while there you were getting one of these free if you bought a big Berkey water filter. Uh, but you can actually just replace these elements here, these, these filter elements there. Uh, so either one of these options are great. Relatively close to the same price. Um, but filter, water filter, a way to filter your water. All right, what was next on my notes? One second here. All right, um, food, you know, keep what you're going to eat, whether you want to carry like tuna packets and ramen noodles. If you're carrying ramen noodles, you're going to need something to cook them in, right? Um, protein bars, granola bars, nuts, trail mixes, beef jerkies are all great options. Some things, some mountain house type foods. Uh, mountain house is a great one. They tend to be uh, decent flavor. Otherwise there's other ones, Legacy of Wise and stuff like that. Mountain house is the most common and those you can actually get at like Walmart or you know, uh, sporting goods stores and stuff like that. They all carry them. Um, 
get a couple of those pack in there and then you know pack some additional tuna packets or spam or you know whatever you like to eat again it's personalized to you but food is a must um a way to start a fire all right matches lighter maybe some tinder like some wet fire i'll leave a link below to that wet fire is a good one because it's just a little cube they're small they're compact lightweight and they'll light whether it's wet or dry or whatever it'll light on fire so it's a great thing about wet fires they're not the most economical you know price wise i mean they're not that expensive but you don't really get that many for the price but they are great for what they are and to have a few couple of them in your get home bag for an emergency situation you know spend a couple dollars and get them uh, i like them and and you know your a level of ability to start a fire is going to depend on what you carry you know if you're not very good at starting fires uh, if you're stranded and need to stay warm right a couple big lighters some matches some wet fire things like that uh, really gonna come in handy um, if you're you know an Eagle Scout and you've uh, you know done a lot of survival type situations right building a fires with a ferro rod and a bird building up a bird's nest and stuff like that you know okay well you maybe not might not need this but again you don't know the you don't know the circumstances you don't know the situation you don't know your stress level what that's going to be like so to make it easier on yourself try to carry some of these easier items and not rely on that ferro rod and magnesium to to get you that spark to start that fire you can have a couple of the you know the wet fires in there and make it that much easier for you it's just going to it's going to take a little bit of the stress off the situation. All right, I'm not going to go through everything we went through on here. Uh, just give you a couple more, couple more quick ones here. Um, an IFAC, and for those of you who don't know that, it's an individual first aid kit. All right, you're going to want that. You never know what could happen, what could have led you if you went in the ditch, right? And you need to try and get out and you've got some cuts and scrapes and stuff some bandages could really come in handy especially you know depending on the distance you got to travel um tourniquet a little turn a tourniquet in there in your kit <laughs> Jeez. um you know it everything is going to come in handy bug spray sunscreen you know medications if you you know if you one of the more common medications out there in the United States right now high blood pressure right how many people do you know that are on high blood pressure medication and how many of them carry a couple extra pills on them just in case they need to you know in case they can't get home that day they take them if you take them right away in the morning whatever when you get I don't I'm not personally honest I don't know how they work but you know I'm, I'm assuming you know you take one you know maybe it's allergies or asthma or whatever you know keep an inhaler keep a couple extra pills you know, if you take it right away in the morning and you don't need it till the next morning, what if you don't make it home till it, that next morning, right? What if you got to stay over? What if you're stranded? These are things you need to think about and need to prepare for just in case ahead of time. Okay. Um, Self-defense. Self-defense, another one, right? And make it what you can legally carry on your person in your state, in your current situation, right? If you can... If you can carry a firearm, carry a firearm. If it needs to be pepper spray, make it pepper spray. You know, whatever the case may be, whatever you can carry for self-defense, make it self-defense. A knife, and not carrying a knife necessarily for self-defense, while it can be used for that, you're going to need a cutting tool, right? Make sure you've got the five C's covered, okay? Make sure you've got combustion, con a container for water, combustion, which is your fire, cover right a, a, a shelter i like to use i like to keep a tarp in my bag because it can be put up for a shelter um cutting which is your blade your knife um what am i missing combustion cover cordage cordage that's it make sure you got some some cordage uh 550 cord is pretty common maybe some hard bank line something like that some rope make sure it's something that's going to be strong enough to hold and versatile so that uh it has more than one use because you're not going to want to carry a ton of stuff and one thing you need to take into consideration is your region and your climate if you're in a colder weather climate start carrying some base layers or long underwear all right depending on your age and you know 
Right? It used to be called long underwear. Under Armour came in, and now they started start calling it base layers. But it's the same thing. All right, uh, and carry some extra layers if you're going to be out in the cold. You know, carry some extra gloves, hats, um, hand warmers, foot warmers. Speaking of foot warmers, right? What about your feet? If you work in an office building. And you work in an office and you're wearing, you know, for ladies are wearing heels and, and stuff like that. Or, you know, guys are out there wearing dress shoes or, you know, loafers. Well, are you going to be able to hike 30 miles in your loafers or in your heels? So maybe you want to carry a, a, another, an extra set of shoes, tennis shoes or hiking boots or, you know, something that's going to be more comfortable for you to travel that distance. In. Make sure you carry socks and extra socks. Anybody in the military will tell you. Your feet are key, and when you're trying to trek a long distance, having some messed up feet can really hurt you. You know, not taking proper care of your feet can really put you in a world of hurt, and you're definitely not gonna be able to go anywhere. So, a couple extra pair of socks, be able to change out of, and keep nice, clean, dry socks. You know, keep your feet warm, uh, keep your feet dry. Taking care of your feet is going to be key. So. I'm not going to go any further. If you want any more information, make sure you listen to the podcast. Again, that can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can get ours. Okay, Or you can go directly to our website, journeytopreparedness.net, and you can listen right from there. Uh, if you like, uh, want to support us, want to get your JTP gear, I haven't, uh, haven't seen that in the videos in a while, but there it is. Uh, get your JTP gear at the Teespring store. If you want to support us any other way, like the work that we're doing here, whether it's the videos or the podcast, you can go to uh, our Amazon page uh, at georgiapreparedness.net. You can click on the Amazon tab or you can go forward slash Amazon, put that right in. And right there, you'll see a list of the items that I recommend. Click on that link. You don't have to purchase that item if you don't want to. I recommend you do, obviously, but if you want, don't want to purchase that item, just by clicking on that link, it'll take you directly to Amazon. You can do all your normal Amazon shopping from there. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's just a couple extra steps. Uh, still get your same prime shipping, no additional costs, and if you went directly to the website, all it does is help us out. Give us a little kickback as an Amazon affiliate. All right? If you like this, subscribe, like, share with your friends. Again, subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All right. Till next time, this has been Bear Return to Preparedness. Helping your parent out if you're doomsday, but you're every day. Peace.